boxing title on June 7th at the Sports and Entertainment Centre in Melbourne. If you can, get along and support him. But right now, please welcome Stan the Man Longanidius, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And settle. Kristen, very affectionate. You've it's met each other already? It's going to be difficult, I think. Yeah, no, nah, it'll be fine, it'll be fine. Now, Stan, how are you feeling? How's your preparations for the fight going? Good, 100% ready. So, is is the preparations for kickboxing any different to the sort of preparations we see boxers doing? I mean, do, do you do shadow sparring and running and all that mm -hmm. sort of stuff? It's pretty similar, apart from the fact that we have two extra weapons, we kick, so... But apart from that, it's pretty similar. So, you, but you do the base, same sort of drills, you do sparring yep. drills and all that sort of stuff. Do you have to do special leg work and stuff? Um, for fighters coming up the ranks, usually they go through different drills to condition their legs, you know. Because so when they kick, they, you know, they can take the punishment in the legs and everything, so. Yeah, because that's one of the things about uh, kickboxing bouts that I've noticed, that everyone gets the life cracked out of their thighs and, uh, and well, shins a bit, but mainly your thighs. How do you, how do you get to handle that? Because obviously someone's whacking at it full force. Yeah. Well, the is it just practice or...? Well, practice, of, yeah, of course. But uh, the trick is to, to block them, to check them, and not get hit. But, you know, over a period of time, they, they get conditioned and you can wear them a lot better. Hmm. Let's have a look at Stan working the condition of his legs. Watch this, Christian. You'll be quietly impressed. There's Stan working on the legs of the challenger. Oops. Got him once or twice. This is in 89, of course. And Stan's about to really make his day. Ouch. That hit him in the leg and... Again. So what's going through your mind as you're working here? Are you thinking anything or are you just doing working on automatic? Oh, this guy looks so scary. I knew I had to get him out there quick because uh, the longer he stayed with me, the more he was scaring me, actually. <laughs> That's a great, great work. So he was, as you were saying, he looks pretty scary. He's got the big mohawk and everything. Is there much psyching out of opponents before the bout? No, not really. I, the way I look at it is if I prepare myself 100%, there's no need for me to go out there and look mean or say things to intimidate my opponents. I mean, you know, I believe in my ability, I prepare myself and, you know, put it together on the night. What about that, that moment? I, I always look at that moment when both opponents step in the ring. And this, this is really true, I think, in sumo wrestling. You can, you can pick which one of them is going to win in that short bout by the way they, they look at each other just so they get in the ring. Is that... Is that a special time? Is that an intense time for you as a stand No, not in? really. I, if, if anything, I let my opponent think that he has psyched me out, you know? Like, I look yeah, that'd like... be my plan. Yeah. Yeah, I look chicken. <laughs> I look chicken, but really, I'm going to really hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. And, and uh, the other thing I've always wanted to ask you, too, it, obviously, because you've won so many titles and you've won so many of your bouts, the, your height in a heavyweight uh, uh, weight division isn't a problem for you. How do you, yeah. how do you overcome that? Because... Uh, thinking about it, you think, well, if I'm going to be in a ring where someone's going to kick and punch me as hard as they can, I would at least want to be bigger than them. Mm. That'd be my basic. But that sort of isn't your case, and you still no. knock them out. I've never fought anyone that's the same height or shorter than me. I mean, I'm five foot ten and eleven, or five foot ten and a half. Um, every guy that I fight, the average sort of size, they are about six three, six four, six five. But well, uh, the way the way I look at it is that I'm a small target. I'm, I'm you know very evasive, and I'm a hard target to catch. So. Yeah, I guess you've got to be constantly positive about this. Why did you go into kickboxing as opposed to boxing? I mean, obviously you enjoy the ring and you enjoy the, the combat side of things, but why not boxing where there's more money and mm. more promotion and all that sort of stuff? Well, the way I looked at it was uh, I wanted to be Australia's first ever world champion, world heavyweight champion, and uh, I, I thought, I believe that the sport's a booming sport. It's one of the quickest growing sports in the world, and, you know, we've got a lot of good fighters coming up the ranks, but uh, if I can project a good image and, and be a positive role model for the sport, you know, it could carry me a long way. Has it got the same problems as boxing? Have you got, uh, I mean, with Don King and everything, I think bo people link boxing now with a bit of hype, showbiz, razzmatazz and scams. Is it, is it like that in kickboxing or not yet, or...? Uh, maybe the resume has, but as far as scams, it's a bit too soon and uh, premature. The sport's only been around between 15, 20 years, so... But maybe, you know, as the corporate sponsors get involved, there's big money involved, they, they might pop up. Yeah, it's funny how that happens, isn't it? You've had lots of your fights in the States. What's it like fight, fighting in America? Oh, it's great. It's fantastic. The atmosphere there is phenomenal, especially fighting in Hollywood, you know, like in California, uh -huh. at the Palladium there with a lot of celebrities. It's like, you know, if everyone could see me back home, it's, it was incredible. It's like, wow, I'm telling you. Yeah. And is it hard to settle into a routine when you're in a strange country? Because I felt that for, uh, for Jeff Fennick in the Azuma Nelson fight he, he had in the States, that it must have been hard to get into a rhythm and a routine 
not on your home turf? I've had a total of uh, 16 professional fights there, so that's more than I've had here. Yeah. yeah. So I got used to it after a while. I mean, I, I made a lot of friends there and, and you know, things were going well for me. And what about the fight that's coming up? You're defending your title on June 7th at the Sports and Entertainment Centre in Melbourne. Who's the guy you're fighting? I'm fighting a guy named Branko Sikatik. He's from Croatia. He's a European heavy, uh, heavyweight champion. And, uh, you know, his credentials, credentials are fantastic, so it really spells to be a good fight. Yeah, hisses something at him at the start, like Serbs rule, and then back <laughs> off. So, <laughs> just to get him off edge, you know. Oh, oh, what's like that? Actually, just have a look at Stan when he's really cross. We've got one little short piece of footage. Watch Stan put this guy to sleep. They love to see that fight in the land of the down under. Right Sit there and relax, and good luck for Jim the Seventh. We'll have a bit of a chat. We had our special comedy act on tonight. A name not known to a lot of people, but he was in the movie uh, Kickboxer with Jean Claude Van Damme. He was the brother. He is, in fact, the big uh, American heavyweight champion. When are you going to get a crack at him? That's a very much public demanded fight. There's a lot of hype and talk about it now. I was in Las Vegas about 12 weeks ago watching him fight the guy that I'm going to fight you know, this coming month. So that fight was actually a draw, so if I can knock this guy out, you know, early, uh -huh. um, I think the people will really start demanding it even more, so hopefully very soon. Well, good luck. Good luck for that fight on June 7th. Don't forget at the Sports and Entertainment Centre. Well, speaking of pain and suffering, it's time to get to know people who really know.